What's up YouTube, Biz Matthew here once again with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about how I found my cash buyer and how uh, the cash buyer appointment went with seeing the properties. Now, before we go on, be sure to subscribe to this channel, uh, like this video, and, and be sure to comment any questions that you all have, uh, and let's, let's grow this community together. Uh, now, how I found my cash buyer, I'm gonna go right into it. So. Finding cash buyers can be one of the most difficult things you can do as a wholesaler. Um, and so um, you can buy a list, you can post things on Facebook, on Craigslist and different things like that. But uh, for me, I was in a time crunch and I really needed to find a cash buyer quickly. And so I blasted, you know, the email blasts, even did text blasts, but it just wasn't working. And so I picked up the phone and just started calling people, cold calling investors around the area. Now, how did I find my investors? How did I find these cash buyers? So I went to this website called listsource.com. It's just a website where it has a bunch of data about um, housing and when houses were bought um, and different things like that. Uh, and so I pulled up this list on listsource.com that found people who bought houses for cash within the past 12 months in the zip code that I was selling this property at. And so I did that, they gave me a list, it was probably around like 100, 150 people. Um, and then from there, I skip trace. Now skip trace basically means finding someone's number, finding someone's in contact information. And so I skip trace this list of cash buyers and I started calling each and every one of them. And so I was, I spent like a couple days just calling all 150 cash buyers. Hey, I have this property on Truett Road. Would you consider um, buying it? Are you looking for another flip? I saw that you bought a, a house for cash around this area. I have one available for you at a discount. Are you interested? Things like that. Um, and it's just a good way to um, network with people and have them on your on your list so i found this one lady uh, i called her once she didn't answer so i sent her a text and she's and she said yeah send it over to my email so i did that and then two weeks later i still couldn't find a buyer and so i just went back to the list and i called her number again something was telling me just to call her again because she didn't respond to the email i sent her with the property information and so i called her and say, hey, you're interested? She's like, okay, let's set up. Let's set up a time to see the property. And this is my very first house that I'm wholesaling. And so when I'm going to this property, I am I am extremely nervous because I don't know how the dynamic will work between the seller and the cash buyer and myself. And so I just tell the cash buyer, hey, uh, the seller has been going through a lot of marketing, a lot of people trying to buy their house they would just prefer that all communications be done through me about like the property uh, price and things like that. And so she understood that. But even anyways, you know, they got to communicate and talk to each other. Um, and over time, I just got more open to both sides that, hey, I'm a middleman in this transaction. Um, she brings the cash and you bring the house and I'm just in the middle facilitating this transaction. And so, Basically, uh, when we went to the house, uh, she looked around, she saw the property and whatnot. I showed her around. The guy was just sitting on his couch, was just reading. And, I, and she was just looking through the property, saying, wow, you know, it does need a good amount of work. The yard, there was a pool in the backyard that was very costly to fix. And yeah, and so that's how I went. And she said, hey, I'll let you know. And then the next day she brought like a contractor there and another friend. And they looked at the property too to say, okay, how much would this cost and that cost? And yeah, so during this time, I'm extremely nervous because this is the first house that I wholesale. And so uh, I just don't know how, you know, everything will work out and whatnot. And like, if she's gonna find out the price, I'm contracting it at, you know, what I'm selling it to her, basically my fee um, and everything like that. But everything went fine. And, you know, I was on a huge time crunch, like, the seller was pounding me. He wanted to, to like close on a certain day. 
I did tell him I was going to uh, close, but that didn't happen. And so I had to postpone it another few days. But anyways, she was a seller. She offered me um, lower than what I expected. So basically, I contacted the house for 70 grand, right? I was marketing it for 105,000. I was just feeling myself. I was reading Think and Grow Rich. I just had this abundant, I just had this mindset to shoot for the stars and whatnot, but whatever, you know, no regrets. So anyway, she offered me 73,000 for the house. I was like, uh, I can't do that. Uh, and then I said, would you consider around 95,000? She said, no. And then I was like, is that the lowest you can go? She was like, I can do 75. Like, I really want to help you out and the seller. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the most I can go with. So anyways, <laughs> that's what happens. Uh, and then I was trying to find another seller, right? Another buyer. And so I, I decided to actually reach out to another wholesaler. Um, I said, hey, can we joint venture on this deal? They said, hey, we'll look into it. And mind you, I, I was just thinking about it. I didn't never sign the contract. Um, and they were saying, dang, you kind of priced it a little bit high. So now I have all these doubts uh, about, dang, did I, do I have to go back to the seller, renegotiate and things like that? Um, but that didn't happen. Anyways, I didn't sign the contract because the woman, uh, I, I something just told me to text her again. Just text her again. I'll say, Matthew, you don't need to make 30, 35 grand from this, you know? 15 grand would be a good amount for your first wholesale deal. And so I was like, hey, I text her, I say, hey, we'll consider an offer around the mid 80s. She was like, oh, okay, I'm more open to that. And then she came back to the house, um, you know, and I told, this was her first time working with a wholesaler. So I told her, hey, I told the seller, we're, we can live, leave whatever we want in the, she, the seller can live, leave whatever he wants in the property, any trash, any furniture, and we'll take care of it. And so she wasn't aware of that. She wasn't really aware of that closing cost that the buyer pays all closing costs. I just didn't make that abundantly clear to her because she didn't work with wholesalers. So we took a thousand off for the cleaning fee for trashing the property. And then I paid for the closing cost, which was 175. And so basically, you know, as you saw in my other video, I made $13,825. Um, but so that's what happened with, with the whole dynamic. I uh, got it closed at a title agency, put in my name instead of my LLC name, my mistake. Um, and then, yeah. And so I'm going through this with you all just to say, you know, it won't be perfect. It won't be as you envision. It's not as easy as you think, and especially for my first property. I was extremely nervous. I was very stressed. Like I, I was hardly getting much sleep. Like it affected my sleep. Like it was bad because I was trying to find a buyer. I promised a seller and he was pressuring me um, to get it closed. And, you know, like I come there and say, hey, I'm a cash buyer. I can buy this house and then I can't close on the property. That's a no-no. So anyways, um, yeah, that's how it went. And it, it, I closed within 30 days with that property and I praise God for that. And, um, you know, now I just know to just relax, you know, wait for a nice buyer, be consistent when you follow up with your cash buyers also. So I hope this all helped you all, you know, just saying my story of how my meeting with the cash buyer went. Um, and yeah, that you all can go forth and do your own thing and uh, make some money. You know, I have goals and plans with this uh, real estate thing. Uh, get some cash flow with assignments fee and invest it in rental properties, commercial, do development deals. You know, that, those are long-term goals. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe, like this video, subscribe, like this video, subscribe, like this video, and comment down below. Bye.